Hey, Pat McCardle back for another episode of Shop Talk. And I got my good buddy Chris Hendricks here because we're talking Rangers today. And Chris, yes, what, what do we have in the shop, buddy? Because it's pretty exciting. Well, Pat, this is the brand new Ranger XD 1500. We've got three new episodes for you guys because there is so much to talk about. Uh, we just have to break it up into chunks because it's a, there's a lot. It's an all new vehicle and it's awesome. We're excited to tell you guys about it. This first episode today, we're gonna be really focused on strength. Uh, specifically, Pat's gonna walk through a lot of the details of the transmission on this vehicle and why it makes it so awesome. It is pretty awesome. I, you know, I got a chance to get a little bit of seat time on these new XDs and I'll tell you, I, I've never experienced a Ranger better. I mean, when, you, when I think hardest working, smoothest riding, this thing nails it to the T, right? Uh, and I think a big part of that is centered around this all new steel drive technology. So I think, Chris, maybe let's go hop in the cockpit and kind of show these guys, you know, user interface of what they're gonna, what they're gonna see when they're going to shift, change some of the drive modes and that type of thing, and then we can dive deeper into how it actually works. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna show you guys is just the butter smooth shifting. As you can see, super easy to put it in drive, really smooth back and forth between <laughs> drive and reverse. Super smooth. Butter smooth. Yes. That's awesome. What you'll notice here is this vehicle does not have high and low gear like a lot of Rangers. It also doesn't have neutral. Um, in order to engage neutral, you actually use a neutral disconnect that's down in the dash. Yeah, so this one's pretty easy to get to. You pop off a little access panel here down by your right knee, and then there's a lever that all you do is twist it 90 degrees and give it a pull till it clicks. Now you can actually roll this vehicle without the engine being on with the key out of it. So, you know, if you ever find a use case, you need that for it. Pretty simple, and then to get it back, you flip that lever, push it in, put the cover back on, you're ready to go. Yeah, pretty <laughs> slick. The other thing that you'll notice is, as I mentioned, we don't have high and low gear, and that's actually controlled through the drive modes. So I'll go through those and how that's a little bit different on this vehicle. So Eric, if you can zoom in here first, this is the new drive mode switch on the Ranger XD 1500. So I'll go through all the different drive modes and what those mean. So the first one here is comfort and comfort is just like it sounds. We limit throttle response, really limit engine braking. And the focus is to make a super smooth, really comfortable, quiet ride with the vehicle. Yeah, and I think the other key like that I find awesome about this comfort mode is that it keeps your engine speed down when you're yep. just tooling around the trail. So even when you're wearing helmets, you and I can talk even when we're going, you know, 20, 25 miles an hour with ease without having to yell yeah. at one another. It's really, really nice. Yeah, peace and quiet <laughs> on the trails is awesome. That's what comfort mode is. So the next is standard mode. This is really the happy medium. So this is what you'd expect in terms of normal throttle response, um, pretty middle of the road engine braking. Um, this is good for, you know, most average Ranger situations. The next is sport. So this is Pat's favorite mode, as I'm sure all of you guys can guess with a name like sport. Um, this is basically maximum throttle response and also maximum engine braking. So the vehicle is gonna accelerate a lot more abruptly. It's also gonna decelerate more abruptly. Yeah, sport mode's the one that's really gonna, you know, give, give you a little, throw, throw you back in the seat a bit and, you know, put a, put, a, put a grin on your face while you're pushing the skinny pedal down. Yep, <laughs> we thought about calling it Pat McArdle mode, but sport just seems like it's yeah, Sport's way more fitting. A little yeah. bit easier to understand um, for those who aren't fans of the show. Those of you who aren't fans of the show. Um, the other mode that's cool though is tow haul mode, which you actually push in on this drive mode selector to get to. And tow haul mode is really focused on maximizing torque. So it's getting maximum power to the ground. It's made for those towing and hauling situations. Um, it limits overall vehicle speed, but is really focused on maximizing torque. Yep. Yeah. And I think just to make sure everybody saw what you're doing, you know, that knob rotates for comfort standard and, and sport. And then you push it in to get to tow haul and you push it again to go back to, you know, your normal modes. So super easy to operate, but new for, for this year on the, uh, on this model. The other one, I think Chris, that we got to show them while we're in here is over on the left side is, you know, kind of the, the, the modes you get for the, the differentials front and rear, right? Yep. And that's, that's a little different on this one too. Yep, we use the same Polaris all-wheel drive differentials on this vehicle as you've known in our other products that have been really awesome, but the way we control it is different in this vehicle. So new in the XD 1500 is independent control of the um, front and rear differentials. So this allows you to control your front differential and your rear differential independently. Uh, I really like this because it enables a new mode, which we call 
affectionately around here, ultra turf. Yeah. Which is basically you leave your rear differential open um, and you engage your front differential. Um, I really like it because like in the springtime, if I'm out and need to get through muddy spots in a field or back in the woods, um, I've got the, the capability to get through it. The, the vehicle will pull me through with uh, the all wheel drive. But also when I'm back on the grass, I'm not tearing it up because I've got my rear differential locked, which is easy to forget sometimes. I know Pat, you've been guilty of that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I think, you know, for me, the other reason I like it is when I'm trail riding, I can get that front end to pull me around corners, but I still get a nice, you know, tight turning radius with the rear end unlocked and nice, easy steering effort as well. Yep. So, you know, it's not just, you know, rear end open one wheel drive. It's actually like, you know, one, one rear, two fronts. So you really get quite a bit of traction when you're going too. So it's really nice for that. Yep. The last thing we'll show you here, if Eric, if you zoom in on the gauge, is um, you can see this little indicator. It'll actually show you um, what's engaged and, and what's not as you toggle through the different modes. So really easy and intuitive and even more customizable with this vehicle. So let's get this box opened up, which is super easy to do. You know, you got a latch on either side, cable operated, really smooth operation here. And then what you guys are first going to see is this all new three cylinder pro star motor. So we got, you know, a 1500 liter and a half motor sitting right here, crankshaft run in front to back. So it's a north south engine right in front of it. If you can get your camera down, you might be able to see part of the transmission here. So it's located right in front of the engine. And then the power coming out of the transmission is actually going to go on this shaft right here back to the rear drive. And then that's going to split power out to both wheels. So that turf function is back in the back. And then there's another shaft similar to this one that runs up to the front end to drive the front, uh, front drive uh, to be able to get that all wheel drive functionality. So overall, you know, new north south crankshaft configuration on this new uh, 1.5 liter engine. We got a brand new three cylinder, new transmission, new rear diff, you know, front drives beefed up for the XD. Overall, this is a fantastic drive line on this, this vehicle. There's a couple parts that I recognize that look the same as, as a traditional UTV today. So I can tell, you know, you've got your drive and your driven clutch. Uh, there's a belt connecting them. It kind of ends there for me. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is very different than what I'm used to seeing in a UTV. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got actually a loose belt sitting out here. So you guys can kind of see if we zoom up here, there's a whole bunch of little steel uh, sections and then a, a band that holds them all around together. So we've got these straps to keep this thing contained because that's really how it is on the, on the vehicle in the transmission. Um, but what most people don't realize is that this, this transmission is filled with a special oil. And this chain, uh, this belt, doesn't actually directly ride against these sheaves. It relies on an oil film so that you don't wear either of those things out. So if you're kind of familiar with like piston rings in a cylinder, kind of the same idea where it rides on an oil film. The cool thing about this is that we can electronically now control both the drive and the driven sheaves to, to push them in and out. So we can actually independently control the engine speed and the ground speed of the vehicle now. So whereas on a mechanical, uh, like a belt driven CVT where it relies on springs and weights to do that, that calibration effectively, those different drive modes that Chris talked about in the cab, we can actually control here by the ability to ratio both of these clutches differently. So for instance, in comfort, we can actually make it so that the engine spins low speeds, but the vehicle can still go relatively fast. Or in sport, we can allow the engine to spin fast, really spool this up, but you know, keep this one you know, kind of up riding on the top. Um, so there's a lot of really neat things that we can do here. And I think maybe just to explain how this works, because there's some bits that you, know, you don't recognize, right? Like, hey, there's some clutch packs in here. Like, yep, what the heck yep. do those do? So the input on this thing is over on the end I'm standing against here, and this actually faces the engine. So on the vehicle, this side would be pointed toward the back or the rear, rear end of the vehicle. So this is the engine side. So this shaft is spinning anytime the engine is, is running, right? Well, right now I think we're sitting in reverse. Um, so there's a planetary gear set that you guys might be able to see uh, if I get this thing rotated to the right uh, orientation here. Uh, right there. So that planetary that you see down buried in there is actually the reverse planetary. And in order to engage that, the hydraulics in this are basically going to engage this clutch pack and then start to spin everything the opposite direction that the input shaft is rotating. So you'll see when I spin this clockwise with that clutch on, you'll see everything else spinning counterclockwise from my view. Okay. So the next thing is if I shift and I'm going to grab the shift lever down at the bottom that you guys can't see but I'm gonna flip it into drive. Well, what that does is it engages this other clutch pack and then everything spins in the same direction as the input shaft. So where I'm holding it and spinning counterclockwise, you see everything spins counterclockwise or clockwise, you know, kind of the direction it would need to go. 
Um, so that effectively there's hydraulic pressure and valving in the valve body that's going to allow these clutch packs to, to engage and disengage. These are really what starts this thing out. So as that slow speed creep, as that vehicle's just getting going, that's really being done with these wet, wet clutches. And you can see if you're familiar with like a dirt bike or a motorcycle clutch, that it's a stacked up set of friction, friction plates and, and steels. Uh, it works just like you're used to seeing there. And what that does is it simulates a really large uh, clutch by, but allows us to shrink it down in a small area. So it's easier to package in this tight assembly on uh, size on a side by side. Um, the other thing as we go back in the power flow here, you'll see that there's a, a speed sensor disc here. Um, so this is how we read the shaft speed for the input speed. And then there's actually an output shaft sensor down on the back side that we'll show you in just a minute. Um, as we get up to the top then, this is the driven clutch. Um, so this is basically what's going to connect down through a gear set to the rear differential or, or the, I'll say the gear set that, that runs the output shafts to get to the front and rear drive. Uh, and maybe we can just spin this uh, cart around a little bit to show some of that stuff off in the back. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys can see this. So these are the two shafts then that basically one goes to the front end, one goes to the rear end. So one drives the, uh, the back end of the vehicle. Uh, this guy, and then this one drives the, uh, the front drive, and you can see this huge spool in the back here. Well, when we talked about that neutral disconnect, that's this lever right here. So when you pull that lever on the inside of the cab, it actually rotates this enough, and I gotta re-index this transmission to get this cutaway to go. Um, but it'll actually slide and be able to completely disconnect this shaft um, to give you a true neutral, and then when you let go, it re-engages that drive line. So if you ever need to tow the vehicle, you got to make sure you, you disengage that to be able to do it. Uh, we've also got a nice filter sitting here. So awesome thing about this, the, the, uh, the service life is quite long. You can go 6,000 miles between the fluid and filter change, um, which is, you know, for Ranger guys, even if you're using it for a lot of work, that's going to get you, you know, quite a bit of distance out of this before you got to do any maintenance. So Chris, as we've talked about, lots of, lots of new things here. Um, what else did I miss? Let's actually dive into some of the like real nitty gritty. Show us what's happening in this transmission, in some of the different gears, in some of the different ratios. Like yeah. let's really dive in, show us what's moving around and, and what's going on with the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, we'll get this camera up close. I think the first thing we'll start out with is park, which is purely mechanical. So if you see this little rod right here, I'm gonna manually reach down and shift this thing into park. And what you're going to see is that park pawl is going to go against the inside of this driven and it's going to basically lock into one of these gaps. Once that happens, that locks the output of this transmission. So when we talked about that neutral disconnect, when you pull that lever on the dash, there's a little lever right here on the back that basically is going to go from, you know, being locked where both of these are moving at once to fully unlocked where I can independently roll the wheels of the vehicle. Um, so that's basically how park and that neutral disconnect works. Okay, the next thing that you guys can see on this cutout is inside, um, so we, we basically already talked about these clutch packs. So we got one for you know, starting off in reverse, one for forward. But what you see here in the back side of this primary is there's a huge spring. And the same is true if we rotate the, uh, let me get this back out of gear. If we rotate the driven, you'll see another spring down in here that basically is doing the same thing. Well, by electronically controlling hydraulic pressure, effectively is what we're doing, we can actually move these, these uh, clutches in and out to be able to ratio the, the, the steel belt on this independent of what the input shaft, what the engine's doing and the wheels, the output shafts are doing. So we've actually got a valve body sitting here, Chris. If you wanna maybe, you know, pop that uh, single bolt in the middle off, um, you know, we've got, you know, the different valves here. Um, effectively, the filter sits on the bottom of this um, and we'll be able to see once that screw comes out of there, you know, we'll get the plate off you know, kind of all the intricacies of the labyrinth here um, that you get to deal with. So, you know, fluid starts out coming up here through the filter and then it basically goes around this whole maze of different hydraulic circuits. Um, and as you shift, this is actually gonna move in and out to basically be on or off for each of these valves here, along with the uh, pressure sensor that's actually measuring, you know, how much pressure you've got. So as this thing shuttles, it basically is gonna control, you know, which one of these valves can be, you know, on and off. And we can also control how much the valves are on or off effectively. So that's how we get the different pressures to be able to get that really smooth takeoff and drive away. 
uh, and also control those ratios, you know, independent of one another. So, I mean, overall, this thing blends a lot of different technologies when you think about, you know, if, you, if you've ever had, you know, a planetary automatic apart, you know, off a road vehicle, you'll see something that looks kind of similar to this actually yep. in the bottom of the transmission. What are the reasons people should care about, you know, stuff like the, um, the variable ratios in the transmission? Yeah, absolutely. So the cool thing about this is it gives us the ability to do these different drive modes and really allows the cab noise to come way down. So when you flip that thing into comfort, you know, you're going to have an engine that's spinning, you know, two, three grand, whereas on other models that might be five, six grand to go kind of the same ground speed. So you get a lot less noise in the cockpit to be able to do that. The other cool thing is we get features like hill assist. So if you drive and park this thing like you're going up an incline um, and you let off the throttle, you know, to be able to get on the brake, well, when you let off the brake to get back on the gas, this is actually going to hold the vehicle in place while you get, you know, back onto the throttle. So you don't have to worry about rolling backwards to go drive up the hill again. Really and is that, nice. Does that happen in the transmission? Like, how does that work? It does. Yeah, absolutely. So these wet clutches that we talked about, effectively, these two clutches right here are what's going to allow the vehicle to go from zero to like a couple miles an hour. And then once the whole vehicle is moving, the, the chain is going to, or the steel belt is going to take over. So that hill assist is going to be done right in these clutch packs. And the beauty of this setup, and I think you guys can probably see the ports here, is that this transmission is liquid cooled. So there's a separate radiator basically for this. So we're going to flow enough oil in and out of this thing to be able to withstand that for quite a bit of time. And if you ever, you know, get off the brake too long, it'll actually flash a note up on the dash saying shift to park so you don't, you know, accidentally get out of the vehicle and leave it in gear. Yeah. <laughs> So lots of backups and a lot of durability features to make sure that this thing's always up and running. You yeah, know, super reliable. Absolutely. I think the other cool thing about this, you know, and Chris, you mentioned the creep feature, which yep. you know a lot of people in a Ranger aren't used to, right? Normally in a Ranger, you know, if you shift it into gear and you're idling and you let off the brake, you know, the vehicle, you know, doesn't move anywhere, right? It kind of sits still if you're on flat ground. Well, on this new XD, the, the thing that's cool is much like your pickup truck, when you let off the brake and it's going to move forward a little. This will do that in four in drive or reverse. So either yep. direction, you know, we've got a clutch pack that can help, you know, just allow the vehicle to go at kind of a walking pace, yep. um, which makes it actually much more similar to what you're used to driving in a in, a, in a, you know your pickup, where it's got a planetary automatic with a torque converter. So different way it's handled here, but same kind of consumer behavior, uh, you know, and vehicle behavior. Yeah, and if you guys watch one of our previous episodes, we talk about these more traditional CVTs <laughs> and how they work. Uh, it's been a really awesome design over the year, but as yeah. Pat mentioned, uh, being able to control the engine speed to ground speed and really making the cabs quiet on these vehicles, as well as that low speed drivability and durability are some of those key reasons that we've gone to this new transmission, specifically in the extreme duty lineup, really made for people that need uh, the most durable, most capable vehicle. Yeah, and I think, I think the other thing that's really cool about this, right, is we talked about, you know, yes, this is a steel belt, right, that's, that's in, inside this, but because it's riding on that oil film and we've got that huge cooler that we'll show you guys in a minute or two here, um, you know, this thing doesn't really get hot. You know, it's not like a rubber belt where if you're working it harder, the belt gets hotter. Well, here, you know, the belt's really not touching the sheave. It's got that oil layer. Um, and we've got such a large cooling package on this that it can, it can do work all day long and you don't really care. All right, so we just went really in depth on the transmission. We were looking at the cutaway. We talked about the fact that it's electronically and hydraulically controlled, as well as the fact that it's fully sealed and that it's got an oil bath going on in there. Yep. But then Pat talked about the fact that it's also liquid cooled and it's got a massive cooling package on the vehicle. <laughs> you weren't kidding, Pat. Holy yeah. smokes. This yeah, is so you, big. You've got the full cooling package here in your hands. So, you know, the front of the vehicle would be here. Uh, this first one is really all about air conditioning. So this would be what you'd see, you know, kind of in the North Star today, but a little bit bigger on this new XD. The middle one is actually all about transmission cooling. And then the back one is for the engine. So if we tip this sucker all the way up, the other cool thing you see here are these dual fans. And these are actually PWM or pulse width modulated, which in layman's terms, you know, normal guy speak, what that means is we can spin these fans as fast as we want to. They're not just off on. So they're actually like a variable speed fan. So we can control them, you know, independent of one another and, and really, you know, keep it nice and quiet when you don't need a lot of uh, fan motion and ramp them up when you do. And if you look over on the far side, you can actually see the two ports here for the transmission cooler and they match the ports on the, the steel drive transmission itself. So, you know, one line in, one line out, runs through this core, air flows through it, pretty simple operation. 
So I think, you know, we've talked a ton about the uh, driveline of this vehicle, right? We covered off where the engine is, where the trans is, rear drive, you know, that north-south layout, uh, kind of the different drive modes, what it means to be able to get, you know, not only turf, but ultra turf now, uh, along with all-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. Went through that new rotary knob for the different drive modes. So overall, a ton of stuff on brute strength of this vehicle, this all-new steel drive technology. You know, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you want to see in future episodes. And Chris, what's coming up in the next episode? Next episode's all about capability. Look for that episode dropping soon.